Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part 8 of the Abomination series. This is going to be a longer one. We're going to do Matthew chapter 27. Get out your King James Bible and please turn to Matthew 27. And we're going to start in verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests, now these were not Catholic priests, these were priests of the temple in Jerusalem. All the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he, Jesus, that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. See, even Judas knew that Jesus was innocent. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. In other words, what do we care? We don't care. You, you know, you made your bed, sleep in it. You know, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood to unto this day. So here it is. They're worried about taking blood money and putting it back in the treasury. But they have no problem bearing false witness and killing an innocent person. Um, yeah, that's what... Christ when he told the Pharisees that uh, they strained out a gnat but swallowed a camel. Oh yeah. Now let's take a look at what God says are abominations. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6 verse 16. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yeah. And for those of you in Malachi chapter 1, it says that when God hated Esau, there's people who tell you, well, you know, really the word hate doesn't mean hate there. It just means that God loved Esau less than Jacob. Well, guess what? It's the same word as right here where it says, these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Yeah. Six things the Lord hates, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. One, a proud look. Two, a lying tongue. Three, hands that shed innocent blood. Four, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Six, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Uh, let's see, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. And that's seven. Do you know that the Pharisees were guilty of every single one of these? Proud look, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, heart that devised wicked imaginations, 
feet swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Think about it. They were guilty of all seven of these things that the Lord hates, that these seven things that are an abomination unto the God. And they're worried about taking blood money and putting it back into the treasury. Oh, yeah. What did Christ say about um, keeping their own traditions? Oh, yeah. All right, so. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. And that's Matthew 27, 8. Verse 9. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, thirty pieces of silver was the price of a slave in the Old Testament, if I remember correctly. Verse 10. And gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest, you know, if you say so. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. In other words, what good is it arguing when people are lying about things that you say? Verse 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had a notable prisoner named Barabbas. Now remember, in one of the other Gospels, he was called a murderer. Verse 17. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? Now, Christ is a Greek rendering of the word Messiah, which is Hebrew. Which is why I think that, why I believe that Pilate was speaking to all of them, including Christ, in Greek. Because Greek was a common language, um, just like in the United States. English was, for a long time, the common language, but uh, that is starting to change. And if you don't believe me, go down to Miami or Los Angeles. Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. Who delivered him to them? The Pharisees. And if you don't know who the Pharisees are, um, take a look in the encyclopedia that the, um, cert, the tribe prints and look up Pharisees. You'll find out that they are the, the um, it's modern, their modern day religion today. Verse 19, when he, Pilate, when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Christ? I'm sorry, with Jesus, which is called Christ. They all, said, uh, they all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made. If you don't know what a tumult is, it's like a riot. He took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent 
of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Now, all the lying preachers will tell you that Pilate is guilty of the death of Christ, and nothing could be further from the truth. In one of the other Gospels, Pilate tried to release Jesus three times. I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us. Now, when they're talking about blood, they're talking about his life or the taking of his life. His blood be on us and on our children. That people is a curse. They willingly took a curse upon them. Verse 26. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Now, scarlet, uh, you know, like purple, it was the uh, color and symbol of royalty. So basically, you know, they're mocking him. Verse 29. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. And when they were come unto a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, they parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it, buildest it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. You know, it's funny that after one of the thieves probably, you know, there was the two thieves, and we read in the previous study that the one of them repented. I think in the beginning, they were saying the same type of things to Christ, but then the one thief probably had a change of heart and said, you know, Lord, when thou come into thy kingdom, Remember me, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but, and Jesus said, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. I think one of them had a change of heart, so. Verse 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the, six, the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, 
Why hast thou forsaken me? Now, this is either Hebrew or Aramaic. Some people say it's Aramaic, but, you know, it's their sister languages. Verse 47. Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. So here it is. Jesus is saying, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And they're saying, Oh, this man's calling for Elias or Elijah. They didn't even understand what Christ was saying. And people want to make you believe that the New Testament was written in Hebrew. I don't think so. It was a dying language even back then. 48. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. The rocks were broken, people. Now, here's the really interesting part. This is, uh, this is the part, the punchline. So, here it is. Jesus yielded up the ghost. The veil of the temple rent in twain from the top to the bottom. There was an earthquake and the rocks were broken. Verse 52. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept. In other words, they were dead. And many bodies of the saint which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and went into the holy city and appeared unto many now this says that after christ was resurrected on the third day that's what it's said you know this is what it's saying that the graves were open and many bodies of the saints came out of the graves went into jerusalem and appeared unto many. Now, according to the um, Babylonian tall, T-A-L-L, one word, and then mud, M-U-D, second word, put those two words together and delete one of the L's, and then you know what I'm talking about. In their holy book, the tribe, which is their commentary, they record this happening, that people came out of the graves and went into Jerusalem and testified about Jesus. And guess what the Pharisees did? They put these people to death again. They killed them again. Now, you'd have to read the uh, fables. You know, they, they say they put them to death because... Uh, they said, well, you know, that maybe they were zombies or uh, maybe they were not really dead. They just pretended to be dead so that they could trick people into believing Jesus was the Son of God and, you know, various other stupid theories that they had. So they, they put him to death for blasphemy. Isn't that... Isn't that just lovely? Peachy keen and wonderful and lovely. All right, so let's go back. Let's continue reading. I believe this is the only gospel that mentions this event. Verse 54. Now, this ha the, the, the resurre these people were resurrected out of the graves after Christ's resurrection. It's, this happened after three days. So this didn't immediately happen. Verse 54. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women were there beholding afar off, which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him. All right, let's keep going here. 
Among them was Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's children. When the even, even was come, evening, when the even was come, there was a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone on the door of the sepulcher and departed. departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, While he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. All right, so Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as ye can. So they went, made the sepulcher sure, set, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Now, they're not talking about a watch, a wrist watch, no. They're talking about guards, armed guards, standing around the sepulcher, the, the grave. I mean, you know, you're, are you going to fight armed guards to steal a dead body? I mean, that's what, that's what uh, they want you to believe. All right, so let's read chapter 28, Ma Matthew chapter 28. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Um, I'm guessing these keepers are these the, 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 the guards that were keeping the watch. Verse 5, And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Now, isn't that interesting? You've got an angel here calling him Lord. If Jesus is just a man, why would an angel from heaven call, say, see the place where the Lord lay? Hmm. Interesting question to ask people that tell you that Jesus is just a mere man. Ask them that question and ask them to give you, you know, have them give you an answer. And, and get back with me. I'd be very interested. All right, come and come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they parted quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Now, if Jesus is just a, a, a mere man, why is he being worshipped? And why doesn't Jesus say, oh no, don't worship me, I'm just a man. Uh, yeah, worship God. But he didn't say that, did he? So, you got a choice. Either Jesus is the Lord God, in the flesh, or was in the flesh until that resurrection, or 
If he's not God, then he is a deceiver. And the Jews are right. Take your pick. Because here it is, he's being worshipped. And we're told in the Bible to only worship God. So either Jesus is God in the flesh, who was resurrected, or he's a deceiver, people. Take your pick. Take your pick. Verse 10. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. Okay, so here it is. The guards came into the city and are telling the priests, not the Catholic priests, what, what happened. <laughs> Excuse me. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Now, let me tell you something. I was in the army during wartime, well, Vietnam. And if you were in a war zone and you fell asleep on guard duty, you, according to military justice, they were the 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 highest the high ranking officer in charge of your unit was within his rights to have you put to death because you jeopardized his entire unit by sleeping on guard duty. And let me tell you something. The Romans were a hundred times more uh adamant about this. If you fell asleep on guard duty, you were executed in front of all your men, in front of all the men. You would, you know, you want to go to sleep on guard duty? This is what happens. And they stick a sword in your belly and watch you die. You don't go to sleep on guard duty. You just don't do it. The Romans were brutal people. But even the U.S. Army had executed people that had fallen asleep on guard duty. I mean, come on. They don't talk about it, but it happened. You just don't do that, people. So here it is. They gave these soldiers a lot of money, and they were telling them, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we sleep. Now, if you were sleeping, how in the world did you know his disciples came and took him by night? Uh, if you're asleep, you're not going to see him. And if you do see him, aren't you going to get up and say, hey, what are you guys doing? Pull out your sword and say, get out of here, trying to steal the body. How dare you? I mean, think about it. If you're asleep, you're not going to know who took, uh, uh, if somebody took a body. And if you do know who took the body, you're awake and you're going to fight them because that's your job. And if you don't do your job, the Romans will put you to death, the soldiers. So say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and secure you. Yeah. When the governor finds out about this, we're, we're going to tell the governor, oh, no, 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 don't. Don't put these men to death. It's it's not their fault. You know. I mean, really? You know, I those guards were in a hard between a rock and a hard place, but they're getting a lot of money. Verse 15. So they took the money and did as they were taught, and this saying is commonly reported among the well, the tribe uh, you know, it, it, it rhymes with news and starts with a J. And this saying is commonly reported among the tribe unto until this day. Ah. Yeah, Google and Tube is using um, words. They're using voice 
recognition programs and they're looking for certain keywords and if those keywords pop up uh, they're censoring videos so I'm trying to my best to you know all right 16 then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them and when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted you see some people say that well Jesus really wasn't killed he really didn't die you know, he was just uh, beaten up real bad and had a spear stuck in his side and, you know, crucified and had nails in his feet and his arms but and, and was beaten to a pulp. But he really wasn't dead. And when they buried him, he, he revived and came back to life. Uh, yeah. And I'll tell you what, that centurion, a soldier, a centurion is, you know, a Roman soldier, I'm sure he'd seen a lot of action. And when he stuck a spear into his side and water and blood came out, I'm sure a soldier, a combat veteran, knows the difference between somebody that's passed out and somebody that is dead. So that's what they call the swoon theory. Yeah, Jesus was just passed out and... They thought he was dead, and they buried him. And then three days later, you know, he he just he re, he wakes up out of his coma, and and uh, now he's this victorious. Uh, yeah, this is what this is from the uh, tall mud. Yeah. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, "All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth." Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Now, why are we going to baptize people in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost? I mean, why three? Because that's the Godhead, people. If you don't understand the Godhead, go to my homepage, Hit the search bar and type in Godhead. You'll learn something. It's not an easy doctrine to understand. Verse 20. All right, so baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. All right, this is going to be the uh, the end of this part of the lesson. I believe this was part eight. I'm not sure. I'll get it right when I look at the others. But uh, all right, and uh, we've got to cover more in Daniel. Daniel's a, uh, like I said, it's a tough book. I don't understand the 70 weeks thing. I really don't. I, it hasn't, I don't know, I've never, never really got, um, understood it that well. But I do know one thing. The um, 70, uh, the, uh, in the 7th, 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. And like I've mentioned, there is the Temple Mount Institute. I'm sorry, the Temple Institute, the Temple Institute, and the Temple Mount Faithful that want to rebuild the temple and re start redoing animal sacrifices and have a Sanhedrin for the enforcement of the Noahide laws of which every single Christian is guilty of blasphemy in their eyes. And the punishment is death, method of execution, beheading. And guess what, people? That's in the Word of God. Uh, you know, <laughs> the people just don't realize how, what a serious time 
we're in. They, they just don't get it. And of course, to people like me, um, I'm, I'm, I've been told to leave so many different churches. I mean, you know, here it is, you get invited to a Bible study. And I'm not argative or combative. I just says, well, wait a minute. Um, now you're saying this, but right here in the Bible, it says, you know, and I'll read it. And uh, you do that two or three times. And the next thing you know, you're told, well, you know what? You're, you're going to have to leave because, well, hey, I upset their little apple cart. But in Revelation 20 and verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that's only the introduction, people. So, what can I tell you? All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, in Jesus' name, amen.